focus on the journey not the destination joy is found not in finishing an activity but in doing it hello friends my name is sabi and in today's video we will discuss about route type 2 the mac ip advertisement evpn aims to simplify the implementation of virtual layer 2 network overlays while bridging serves as the fundamental mechanism for packet forwarding within the layer 2 networks Therefore in this video we'll explore the operation of bridging in EVPN networks and how we advertise MAC addresses and how to perform ARP suppression Until up this point in the EVPN series we have covered various aspects related to EVPN EVPN inherently provides support for dual attached devices commonly referred as multi homing networks to handle these nodes EVPN utilizes route type 1 and route type 4 as its primary mechanism the route type 4 designates one of the peers as the designated forwarder for multi destination frames the route type 4 advertisement contains the mapping of ether segments to the routers that serves the segment when multiple advertisements are received from an ethernet segment each vtap selects the segment with the lowest ip address as a designated forwarder for the virtual network whereas the route type 1 serves the purpose of informing the network about the association between common devices or ethernet segments and the switches they are connected to in the context of data center an ether segment is defined as either the bridge network to which a network virtualization endpoint is connected or a bonded link when connection is established through a bonded link the route type 1 advertisement includes the lscp identifier of the remote nodes as a esi the ethernet segment identifier when other leaf nodes receive the bgp update containing the route type 1 advertisement they can identify which of their peers are also connected to the same host based on this information to comprehend how bridging function in evpn let's examine the traditional 802.1q bridge and its bridging process to comprehend how bridging function in evpn let's examine the traditional 802.1q bridge and its bridging process the ieee 802.1q standard defines the operation of vlan aware bridges commonly referred as 802.1q bridges in this topology three virtual networks vlan 10 20 and 30 exist in the context of this 802.1q bridge these virtual networks represent vlans an 802.1q bridge forwards packet based on the vlan and the destination mac address if the packet arrives without a vlan tag the bridge assigns a default vlan tag to the port 802.1q bridge employs a technique known as flood and learn to populate the mac forwarding table when a bridge receives a packet with a vlan 10 However the bridge excludes the ingress ports from the list of ports to which the packet is flooded this filtering mechanism is called self forwarding check the bridge records the vlan and the source mac address as reachable by the ingress port in the mac forwarding table this operation is known as learning additionally it checks the entry in the mac forwarding table for the combination of vlan and the destination mac address if it is not listed it will flood the packet out of all the ports belonging to the same vlan as an incoming packet this action is referred to as flooding this process at every node along the packet path as it travels from the source to the destination how does a bridge determine which port belongs to the specific vlan the configuration specify that all links between the leaf and the spine switches can carry both vlan 10 and vlan 20 resembles a trunk link for instance when c1 sends a packet to l1 and receives a packet from c1 destination c5 without an existing entry for a vlan 10 and the mac address l1 first learn filter out the port from the flooded port list and record the vlan 10 and the mac address of c1 are reachable by that port then it check the destination mac g in the mac forwarding table and if not present then l1 floods the packet to all the ports within vlan 10 the process occurs at every node along the path packet as it travels from source to the destination then how does a bridge determine which ports belongs to a specific vlan the configuration specify that all the links between the leaves and the spines which is carry both vlan 10 and vlan 20 which resembles the trunk links to prevent loops in the bridge network a control protocol called stp is utilized stp transforms any given topology into a loop free structure by removing redundant link in essence stp eliminates the network multipathing so now we will see that bridging in evpn 
packet forwarding between leaf and the spine happens via routing. Basically, we will use layer 3 fabric, no VLANs in the links between the leaf and spine. 802.1Q, traditional learning but only on the edge ports. So for leaves, we need to have a virtualization overlay tunnel needed. So for network virtualization, we need to use VXLAN. To enable eVPN, we must first enable the address family identifier and the subsequent address family identifier, which is L2 VPN eVPN in all the BGP pairings between the leaf and spine. So let's see how a flooding in an eVPN network from C1 to C5 will happen. The packet sent from C1 to the leaf one is no different than in case of traditional bridging. L1 receives the packet and just as in the traditional bridging, learns the MAC address of C1 reachable via the port connected to C1. Now because L1 does not have any information about C5 MAC, it decides to flood the packet just as in traditional bridging. In this case, S1 and S2 do not know anything about virtual network because it is a network virtualization overlay solution. So L1 decide to flood the packet. It must encapsulate the packet with a VXLAN header first. And then it sends the packet to the leaves that has expressed an interest in the VLAN 10 virtual network. So this is what we called as a flooding list. So there are two main options how to handle bump traffic. So in our next video, we'll discuss about how to handle bump traffic. So now L1 sends the VXLAN encapsulated packet to L3 and L5 based on the flooding list. L1 computes the hash on the packet header field of the original packet and then sets this to a UDP source port in the VXLAN header. This packet are then routed to L3 and L5. So when the VXLAN packet reach at L3 and L5, First thing is strip off the VXLAN header and then send the packet out to the locally attached ports that are in the VLAN 10. So neither L3 and L5 learns anything about the C1 MAC address. However, L1 has a new local entries in the MAC forwarding table. So what L1 will do now, L1 advertise the reachability of C1 MAC in the VLAN 10 via BGP eVPN message. Specifically, it use route type 2 message which carries the MAC and the IP advertisement. This message says that C1 MAC in VLAN 10 is reachable via VXLAN tunnel that is next hop is L1. So L1 deliver the message to their peers L2, L3, L4 and L5. Populate the MAC forwarding table with the information about C1 MAC address. But in case of L2 and L4, they don't have the VLAN 10 information. So they will discard this MAC address. So the C1 MAC is now reachable via VTAP L1 now. So this is how the flooding happened from C1 to C5. Packet flow from C5 to C1 with the VPN. C5 sets the destination MAC address to the packet to be C1 MAC, the source MAC to be C5 MAC and send it to L5. L5 receives this message on port VLAN 10. L5 learns C5 MAC. Now L5 knows that C1 MAC is remote MAC reachable via L1. It will update the information in the uh, MAC forwarding table and then based on the remote L1, it will encapsulate with VXLAN header with destination IP as L1 and the source IP as L5. It will compute the hash on the packet header field of the original packet and set this to the UDP port source port in the VXLAN header. And this packet will be routed to L1 via IP routing. Because L5 learned via BGP, that VTAP is reachable via both S1 and S2. So it use hash of the packet, compute from VXLAN header to pick either S1 or S2 and sends the packet to L1. L1 decapsulate the VXLAN header and looks at the native packet, the destination MAC address on the exposed inner packet, which is C1 MAC address in the VLAN 10 and then it will send it to the respective host. So in this case, in eVPN, we have seen that the flooding behavior, but we have seen the flooding behavior in eVPN. So, but what is the need of ARP suppression in this case? So ARP requests or gracious ARP packets are bumped packets because these packets are sent in a broadcast address. So C1, ARP for C5 MAC address. So here it is unnecessary to flood the C5 ARP to L3, where the C3 is hosted in the same VLAN. So leaf perform our proxy by responding the ARP request. This is how we reduce the bump traffic in the network. Similar for network discovery in ARP equivalent to IPv6, 
Network discovery will get benefit from the same caching and the response by L1. This function of caching a remote host RPND information and responding to RPND requests for this information is what RPND suppression. Then the question is how we can advertise the MAC address that been cached in L1. RPND suppression use the route type 2 message to convey the IP address associated with the MAC address in a virtual network. This is a packet capture for the route type 2 in which you have see that the address family is evpn the type is evpn mac and here we will see the mac address being advertised in the extended community you will see the route targets and then we will have a bgp tunnel encapsulation as vxlan in which it is used use for the data plane it, it might be used mpls in this case when the data plane is mpls so this brings to an end to this we already discussed about route type 4 route type 1 and now we discuss about route type 2 which is used for mac ip advertisement thank you for watching this video please share your comments and feedback i'll get back to you